Hey guys, Grand Lake Kuglinchi here for you. Hey Mike, how you doing? Good man, how you doing man? Doing well, thanks. Hey, how, how do you look? I know you still have one game left in this season, but up to this point, what, what, how do you feel about where you are with your game all around and where you need to go next season to take your game to a higher level? Um, I think, I, I think I, I'm okay with it right now. Um, I think there's, uh, there's a lot of things that I did really well all year. There's things that I did a lot better than last year, um, but I wasn't consistent enough. And um, the fact of the matter is there were some bad moments this year that I let my team down when they needed me to be at my best and, and I didn't get it done. And, and I will be, the things I need to do is just be consistent. It's uh, it's not as big of a drastic change as everybody would like to make it out to be. It's only a small fix here and there. And it's not like it's happening throughout an entire game. It's, it's cleaning up the, the really bad plays that I've had, especially you know, uh, in pass protection and getting consistent and becoming the player that I know I can be in that area and um, and just staying at it. And, and, and the things that will help me get there is by focusing on what's important to me and uh, and blocking out the stuff that's that 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 hurts me and, and, and hinders my ability to get there. But um, it's it's a matter. It's just a matter of consistency for me. I think I, I don't think it's anything that's glaring. I don't think it's anything that needs a, a major fix. It's a body position thing here. It's fitting your hands a little bit better there. Um, and, it, and it's finishing, finishing plays and finishing games. And, and that's what I'm going to, going to do moving forward. And, um, it's something that I've definitely learned, uh, throughout this year and it's been a tough year, but it's, uh, it's not as, it's not as, um, it's not as drastic of a change as I think people would like to think, but it's, it's a matter of, of, of being consistent and being the guy that my team needs me to be in the biggest moments at, at the biggest times. Hey, uh, Mike, there's, um, you got this nickname, Big Slim or whatever. Uh, big know, what? This is uh, Big Slim or what? <laughs> Am I missing uh, the Big Slim? Whatever. <laughs> yeah, anyway, a reference to that you've looked slimmer. Lynch and both Lynch and Shannon have been, been asked, you know, about you possibly needing to, um, it might, might help you to a add some weight this off season. Have you had those discussions and where do you, um, you know, fall on that. Do you think that is, is a factor in any, anything um, that you were just talking about? No, I, do, I don't think my size has anything to do with my inconsistency of play this year. I think, um, could I be a little bit bigger? Sure. Uh, but I, you know, the big slim was a nickname that Sherm gave jokingly. I, I'm only, I'm, I was maybe five pounds lighter than I was last year. I just, you know, I guess was put, maybe I was put together a little bit better. I, I don't know, but it's a, uh, it's a matter of, yeah. And if that's a conversation that I have to have with them, if I have it with John and Kyle and, and Dustin Perry, our head strength coach, then absolutely. But I would not equate um, the things that happened to me this year based off of my body weight. No, I, I think it was more, it was all technique based. It was all having my feet in the ground when I needed to have my feet in the ground. Um, but yeah, it, it, whatever they, whatever plan Dustin, John, and, and Kyle have for me is 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 what I'm going to do. Um, I've never been afraid of hard work. I've never been afraid of getting my get, get in the weight room. And um, but no, I don't think I don't think my body weight was an issue at this at, at this year. I mean, sure, maybe it'll help with a full off season and then a normal off season without you know the hindrances of having things closed down, having needing places to go. Maybe that five pounds comes back, but um, no, I, I I stayed at 295, 300 pounds this year, and like I said, it was maybe five pounds less than last year. So um, I think the plan that we have together, me and Dustin and I, are extremely close. We're extremely good at what we do, and 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 um, I'm very proud of the work that I do in the off season. And whatever plan that they have for me is what I'm going to do, and and I'll, I'll I'll put my nose to the grindstone and do it. And um, but I don't think that was an issue. The, the issue for me this year now. Mike, I'm sure you heard what Kyle Shanahan said earlier in the week about, um, you know, the uh, about your fifth year option. And um, he said, you know, they haven't really talked about it, but what I'm just curious what your reaction was to him saying um, you're going to be here for a while, sort of no matter what. And also, um, does a fifth year option, a, a, a contract issue like that, 
Um, does, is that on your mind at all uh, as this season's going on? And, and is that maybe a reason to, to press or anything like that? No, I, to be honest with you, the same as Kyle, I did. I, I didn't realize it was up. I didn't realize that that was an, the, something that we had to decide on uh, relatively soon. I don't think about that. I don't, I think if any player thinks about their contract uh, or anything like, I don't know how you could operate um, and, and play free on a field. If that was something that you were worried about, I have people that take care of that for me. Um, and it's not, ultimately it's not my decision, but yeah, at the end of the day, I want to be here. I love it here. I love our coaching staff. I, you know, from the top, I love our front office and I, proven this year and what the circumstances have been for this team. We have the best ownership group in football. So I, I this is the place I want to be. I want to be a 49er for as long as they'll let me be one. Um, and and um, I, I'm, I'm thankful that I have the head coach that I have because of the things that he said. And he's absolutely right. I think that um, I've gone through some hard times this year. There's no question about it. But to, I, I will not let that overlook the good things that I've done on top of it. And yes, I need to improve. I absolutely need to improve. And nobody will admit that. And nobody will be harder than that on me than, on me, than me. And so moving forward, it's just a matter, like I said earlier, it's just a matter of consistency, blocking out the noise, blocking out the stupid stuff that all it does is bog you down and it makes you worse in the long run. And, and um, I think that if, if I've learned anything, it's, 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 it's to keep going and, and, and focus on what I see and focus on what's the facts of the, what the, what the matter is on, on film, where I need to improve and how to do it to the best of my ability. And, and I'm going to do it. I know I'm going to do it. And the, like I said, the problems aren't that glaring. I have to clean up, you know, the really bad plays here and there. Um, and like I said, I, I will, and, and it's going to get done and, and it's, it's going to be an exciting opportunity to move forward in 2021. And like I said, I want to be a Niners for a very, very long time. Hey, Mike. Um, I wanted to ask from a, from a captain's point of view, um, how did you guys just get through this season? Did you have to have multiple player meetings when times are tough, when you lost certain players? Um, and how do you go about doing that in a, in a year like this where you have to do virtual meetings or do you do that out on a practice field? It was very difficult. It was, it was difficult for everybody. Um, but the only times we ever really had those types of meetings were um, – Honestly, it was logistics because of how many logistical issues we've had this year um, between moving, between virtual, between, um, you know, in-person practices versus walkthroughs versus, uh, you know, whoever, who can, who's up and who's not. Um, it was definitely a trying year in that regard. And it's one of those things that I thought we handled pretty well other than the results. And I think that um, that'll come and, 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 and those things will come and, I didn't, I didn't, I thought that we had a great leadership group from the top, starting with Kyle and John and, and Jed and, and the York family. And it trickled down to us. And yeah, it was, it was, we didn't get as much hands-on work as, as, you know, captains normally do. Um, but I don't think that was an issue at all this year. And like I said, the only meetings we really had were really logistical meetings that we needed to be, have, every, have everybody on the same page on. Hey, Mike, a question about your, your bookend, uh, Trent Williams. Uh, I, I think it was easy for us just watching him on, on TV and in camp to forget what he went through in, in 2019, missing the whole season. Just seeing whether you had that same reaction and whether there was anything sort of behind the scenes that you witnessed him, you know, you know working through in training camp, getting back to that, Pro Bowl level that he was in in 2018, um, his last his last full season. I think the only thing that um, was ever going to hinder Trent was just getting the command of our offense, and he proved that that wasn't an issue after the first week of training camp. So after that, we kind of knew who we had, we knew the player that we have, we knew the guy that we had, and 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 the results speak for itself. I mean, Trent um, once once he hit the ground running this training camp. We knew he 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 came back with something inside him that he had something to prove, and he he had something to prove, and he he knew that he could still play this game. We all knew that he could still play this game, and now the world knows that he can still play this game, and he can still play it to as as good as anybody that's ever played our position. And and it's um, it's it's impressive the job that he's done this year um, to come in and and set the tone right away, and 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 the and the level of play that he's been able to upkeep this entire year, um, given 
a chance that, you know, our, our offense and the things that we're asked to do, um, and, and especially in the run game and blocking surfaces and stuff like that, isn't easy to pick up on. And he did it without an offseason. He did it without, I mean, granted, yes, he had familiarity from his time in Washington with Kyle and, and, and the rest of those guys, but it's not the same. And after nine or, or, or six or seven years away from them, um, the job that he did and commanding what he, what his, our job and his job uh, was truly, truly impressive. Um, Trent's been an awesome teammate. He's been an awesome competitor and obviously one of the elite offensive tackles in football. And um, the job that he's done for us this year, you know, speaks volumes and, you know, hope to God we can keep him for a little bit longer here. Two more, please. Mike, with you being so hard on yourself, how do you find the balance between instinct on the field and then not overthinking things on the field? And then also, finally, your uh, prediction for your alma mater's game tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I'll do the prediction first. I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and guarantee wins, especially against a team like Alabama. But um, Notre Dame's ready to compete, and and they're ready to they're ready to be on the big stage. These guys are have been um, playing at such a high level all year. Coach Kelly and the staff have done an unbelievable job with them in such a trying year. I can't even imagine how hard it is at the college level, uh, let alone, you know, because it's hard at the pro level when we have nothing else to do. But these kids, you know, reminder that these kids are 18 to 22 and going to school with kids that have nothing else to do, but, you know, they have nothing to lose. So it's it's been an impressive year. Um, they're going to compete their butt off and, and um, you know, whatever happens, happens. I'm, I, you know, it's, it's going to be a challenge. Alabama's got one of the, you know, they got one of the most prolific offenses in college football history, but um, Clark Lee, I think he's got a, a, a couple more good send offs before he leaves for Vanderbilt for our guys. And, and it's going to be fun. Um, and in terms of the balance for me, it, that is, that is my biggest, it's my biggest problem is the, is my, my, the, it's a balance between wanting to be perfect and, and playing great football. There's, there's a difference between the two of them. And um, I think that's a lesson that I've really learned this year is that um, no matter what happens and no matter um, the mistakes that I've made and, and the, the, the plays that I've given up, um, I can't ever let it again affect the next week. I can't ever let it again affect the next game. I can't ever let it affect the next play. And, um, and that's something that I, I, I learned throughout this year and I learned it the hard way, unfortunately. Um, but it's, it's been a, it's been a valuable year in that regard. And I, you know, obviously going back, I obviously read what Kyle had said the other day. And, and I think that he hit it out he hit it square on the head. I think it's something that I needed to go through. It's something that I needed to, to have experience with. And it's something that I needed to do moving forward because the only person that hindered, uh, Mike McGlinchey this year was Mike McGlinchey. And, I, and, um, and I know, I know what I need to do to improve that now. And I know, um, how to get into the right mindset to, to be able to improve because um, when you feel like the weight of the world's on your shoulders, it's impossible to be in the right mindset um, to want to and to work to improve and to see and to truly be honest with what's going on on film. And so um, that's a valuable lesson that I took this year that I'm, um, you know, I'm going to use moving forward and, um, and hit the ground running in 2021. I'm excited for the next, I'm excited for this week and get to build on it um, against Seattle who has everything to play for still. And um, it's gonna be, a, it's gonna be a great game and a great opportunity to keep building on something special here. Last one, Nick. Hey Mike, uh, last, last off season, obviously the, the goal was to kind of keep every, keep the band together, so to speak, to, to make another run at this thing. And for the most part, you guys were able to do that just with kind of the economic realities and all the free agents you guys have and things like that. Is there any sense going into this game that this is maybe kind of the last ride for a, a big core group of, of this team? And if so, what does it mean going into this game to have that? Honestly, it, ha it hasn't been something that, uh, that we've thought a lot about. Um, it, 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 that's never really something that I ever try and think about. I, I, I don't, cause we have a job to do. We have, a, we, have, we still have a game to play. We, we, we still have to go out and compete and try to beat Seattle. And um, when the smoke clears and all that, the dust is settled or whatever, you know, that's when we can start thinking about that. Obviously, um, I have a lot of great friends here, a lot of guys that I really respect as teammates, as football players, um, and the success that we've had all together, um, you know, and the things that we've built upon over this, you know, there's been a lot of trying times in the last couple of years, but the ride that we went on last year and, and the, the ride that we, we were capable of going on this year um, 
is special and, and you want to have as many of the guys and as many of your friends and as, as many of those dudes back as humanly possible. Um, but the reality is in the NFL, that's not, that's, it, it's almost impossible. Um, so we're going to obviously play as hard as we can on Sunday, um, do our best to go out with a bang and, and beat Seattle and, and, um, and play and play great football. Um, and whatever happens, happens. And um, it's not something that you like to think about, but um, it is the hard part of this game. And um, it is a reality of this game, but it's uh, whatever happens, happens. And, and, and we hope, and I hope that we can keep as many of those guys back as possible. But in terms of something, is, is that something that we've talked about in the locker room? It's, it's not, nobody, nobody knows what's going to happen. And frankly, almost none of us have control over what's going to happen. So um, we just got to focus where, uh, our task is at hand, and that's beating Seattle this week. All right. Thanks, folks. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, guys. Happy New Year.